Good morning, BCC family. Happy Sunday morning to you. I'm so happy that you are here uh, this morning uh, ready to worship with us. Uh, happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. Uh, hopefully uh, your husband uh, has made you breakfast in bed. Uh, they had plenty of time. They didn't have any time to, uh, you know, they couldn't say that they had to get to church and they didn't have time. So they had time this, this morning. So fellas, uh, hopefully you got in on that. So uh, happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. I'm so happy that you're here with us. Uh, before this uh, service gets started, uh, take a moment and hit that share button. If you're on Facebook or if you're on YouTube, you can hit the share button and we'll share it that way uh, so we can get this video out to as many people as possible uh, so that they can hear the good news of Jesus. Uh, this guy standing next to me, uh, you guys probably don't know, his name is Mark. Uh, he's a good friend of mine from uh, CBS, Community Bible Study. Uh, so we play in the band there on Tuesday nights before the world ended. Uh, so uh, he goes to Georgetown Christian. He's a part of their worship team. So uh, we were just texting back and forth. And I said, hey, come on out. Let's record some worship. So, uh, so Mark and I are going to take us through worship this morning uh, and take us uh, to the foot of the cross. Two, three.
Bless my soul on Jesus when the mountain shakes. Put my trust in Jesus the moment I awake. When my soul is lost. My vision be in Christ alone. His grace is all we've got. His love is like a mighty ocean. His love for me will never stop. And oh, His arms are strong. is like a mighty ocean his love for me will never stop and oh his arms are strong enough to carry me through it all by the grace of passion of my life, Lord Jesus. You are the song within my soul. My strength, my hope, my all in all is you, Jesus, you. His love is like a mighty ocean. His love for me will never stop. And oh, His arms are strong enough to carry me through it all by the grace of God.
deacons here at Borden Church of Christ. To my church family, we miss you, and to those who may be visiting, we're glad that you're able to join us this morning. As we begin our time of communion, I think it's easy to say that these are unprecedented times with the coronavirus and all the stay-at-home orders. I know for me and my family, we've been at home for a couple months now, going through school and work, and it's been easy to blur the lines between the regular routine tasks, such as what it is today. I find myself constantly asked, 
being asked by the kids or myself, you know, well, what is today? Because it's not as clear as it used to be <laughs> to the point that I've even come to accept maybe the new norm that there are no longer seven days in the week. There's only three days, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So as we struggle to blur the lines between just normal routine tasks, I think it's maybe even more important than normal why we take the time each week during our service to remember why we need to do communion. We take this time each week to refocus ourselves and slow down. And instead of just asking, you know, what is today? We ask ourselves, what are we doing to remember Jesus's sacrifice? First Corinthians 11, 25 and 26 says, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross has paid for all of our debts of sin in full. So we take this time each week to remember that awesome sacrifice and that they, that sacrifice continues to atone for our sins. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've given to us. We thank you for all the many blessings, and thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross so that we may have everlasting life with you in heaven. Please continue to be with us in these trying times, and continue to give us comfort in knowing that your will will be done. We love you, and we are yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and we love you. What's the most beautiful thing that you have ever seen in your life? And I'm not talking about something that like maybe you have seen a picture of or something that maybe you saw on TV. What's the most beautiful thing that you personally uh, have ever seen in, in your life like in, a, in person? Um, when me and Brooke got married, we went on our honeymoon to St. Lucia. Uh, St. Lucia is a Caribbean island down in the West Indies and it is just this teeny tiny little island. Uh, it's basically just a volcano sticking up out of the ocean. Uh, but it is uh, literally one of the most beautiful places uh, on earth. Um, when, when we landed at the airport, uh, you know, uh, we, our resort was on the other end of the island. Like we had to go like up and over the mountain uh, and down to the other side. You know, we landed on the ocean, you know, right, right there on the seashore and we had to go up the mountain and then down the mountain to get to our resort. Uh, funny thing is, 
when we got to our resort, uh, we were literally, uh, we passed an, another airport on our way uh, to our resort, like like 100 yards away from our resort. We we're like, how come we didn't land there? You know, why did we have to take this three hour trek up and over the mountain? But uh, but on this trek, uh, it was it was a beautiful drive. It was just a wonderful drive. Uh, we were on a uh, in a 15 passenger van, uh, and it was full, of course, of other couples going to the Sandals Resort. And and someone had to be uh, someone had to sit up front with the driver. Uh, and I'll, I'll let you I'll let you guess uh, who volunteered for that. Uh, it was it was me. Uh, so here I am. I sat up front with the driver for the whole three hours. Uh, Brooke was in the back on a little bucket seat with uh, with a, uh, you know all these strangers uh, in in this uh, van going through there. Uh, but we were driving through this uh, uh, you know through this island up and over this mountain, this this volcano, and it was just beautiful. Just you know waterfalls and 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 flowers and all these beautiful plants and, and animals. Just all of the tropical things uh, that were just so beautiful. Well, on this drive we were um, uh, going you know up the side of the mountain we're almost all the way up to the top of the mountain and the driver told us he said okay we're gonna stop real quick and get your cameras out so I was like it's kind of weird and he said he said you're about to see the most beautiful place on the entire earth and I remember thinking like hey dude you never see you haven't seen every place on the entire earth you know you you know there's not uh, you haven't been every single place so there's no way you could know you know I was kind of cynical I don't know why but we get up and we pull off on the side of the road and we get out and and he was right it was the most beautiful thing that I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, we were up on a cliff uh, looking down into the ocean and it was this big bay and there was a waterfall uh, that was cut out and it was pouring into the ocean and the trees and there was, you know, there was, you, you couldn't tell if humans had ever been there before. I mean, it was just beautiful. You know, looking out into the ocean, you know, water as far as you could see, it was just the most beautiful thing uh, I, I've ever seen. Uh, so, so he was right and, and we got to spend some time there and just look out over it. Uh, so that's the most beautiful place I've ever been to. Uh, and hopefully you've uh, thought of a place that, uh, that you've been to that's even more beautiful than that. Um, but that's one of those things where we can really stop um, and, and, and see these beautiful things um, and see this. Uh, and, but that's the most beautiful place I've ever been to. But the most beautiful thing um, that I've ever seen, is, is uh, the most beautiful thing I've ever seen um, is, is not a place, uh, but, but, you know, Brooke walking down the aisle uh, the day we got married, uh, the day that our, our boys were born um, and, and watching them be born. You know, those are the most beautiful things um, in life. These are our majestic events in our lives uh, that we remember. These, these are moments and times in our life where we can see God and we can see uh, His glory unfolding uh, right before us. Now this morning we're continuing our series uh, entitled Dangerous Prayers. Uh, over the last three weeks, we've looked at some prayers uh, that if we pray them in our lives, uh, we, uh, they, we can expect a change. It can take us out of our comfort zone. They are dangerous because they, they won't leave us uh, the same if we pray these prayers. Uh, we started this series uh, with David's prayer from Psalm 139, talking about, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Show me what is wrong with me uh, within my heart. Uh, the next week we looked at Jesus' example uh, for us when he says, uh, God, your will be done uh, and not our will. Uh, last week we looked at Paul's uh, command for us to pray for all people and how we should be seeking to see people, see other people the way that God sees us. This morning we are looking at an equally uh, dangerous prayer. A prayer that if we pray and we truly pray it and we truly mean it, uh, we cannot stay the same once we pray it. Uh, this is a prayer from the Old Testament. It's a prayer uh, from when Moses was up on Mount Sinai uh, uh, getting the law from God. Uh, if you remember from Exodus, uh, the, the Israelites leave Egypt. Uh, Moses leads them out of Egypt after the ten plagues, uh, and they go out into the wilderness, and, and God calls uh, Moses to come up on Mount Sinai, and he comes up into the presence of God, and the presence of God comes down on this mountain, and a cloud surrounds them, and the Israelites are at the base of the mountain looking up at the glory of God, uh, and, and, and Moses receives the law, and it's written onto a tablet by God himself, and Moses receives all of the regulations, uh, and laws that the Israelites were going to follow for the rest of their lives. Uh, and then Moses comes down the mountain and he hears singing in the camp and he comes to find that the Israelites have built a golden calf. Uh, and he obviously is very angry because he's just spent time on the mountain with God. And he smashes the tablets and he destroys the calf and he grinds it up and mixes it with water and makes the Israelites drink it, which is like the weirdest punishment uh, ever in all of Scripture. But hey, uh, that's, that's how Moses rolled right there. 
Uh, after that, Moses knew that he needed to go back up and, and get the law from God again because he had broken the original uh, tablets. So he goes back up on the mountain again um, and, and God tells Moses to write the law back down and God gives him everything to write. Uh, towards the end of this, uh, Moses is doing all that he can to make an atonement uh, for, for the Israelites. He is begging for the forgiveness of the Israelites before God. Um, and Moses has spent all this time up on the mountain with God. And towards the end of his time up there, um, he asks something of God. He asks God a question, uh, and that question is the dangerous prayer uh, that we're going to look at today. Uh, this is from uh, Exodus 33, uh, verse 18. So after all of this stuff, after all of this time that, that Moses had spent up with God, this is what he said. Moses said, please show me your glory. Moses tells God, I want to see your glory. Now when we read that, we kind of back up and be like, dude, Moses, you've been in his presence for how long now? A long time. You know, you've seen the cloud come down. You've seen the presence of God come down. You've been up there in his midst, speaking back and forth with him. And now you want to see his glory. That, you know, that's, what more do you want? Moses literally wanted to see the face of God. He literally wanted to see God in all of his splendor and all of his glory. Uh, and God, God partially tells him yes. He partially fulfills this request. This is from uh, the next few verses, 19 through 23. And God said to him, I will make all of my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim before you my name, the Lord, and, it will be gr and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But, he said, you cannot see my face, for man shall not see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me which you will stand on the rock. While my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of a rock. I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take my hand away, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. So Moses asked God if he can see him. He's like, I want to see your face. I literally want to see the face of God. And God is like, absolutely not. God is like, it is too dangerous for you to view me because I am so big and so holy and so powerful and so awesome that you literally cannot look at me. And if you do, you will die. God is like, if any man were to see my face, they would not live. So God's like, I tell you what, you know, you can't see my face because it'll kill you uh, because I'm that much greater than you are, uh, but I will, I will give you just a little bit. I will let you see my back. So Moses goes out and stands on the cleft of a rock, uh, and, and God comes through and shields his vision until he's almost out of the picture, and then he lets him see uh, his back. Moses asks to see the glory of God, but the glory of God was too great for Moses uh, to handle. So all he gets to see is God's back. Now when we read that, we're kind of like, you know, it's kind of a bummer, you know, for Moses. You know, Moses wanted to see the glory of God. Moses wanted to see uh, the, the face of God and, and he didn't get to. It's kind of a bummer, uh, but, but it still changed him. You know, when we come in contact with the glory of God, we can't stay the same. When we come in contact with the glory of God, uh, there will be changes. It was a lot of changes for uh, Moses, especially physically. Look at Exodus 34, uh, 29 and 30. It says, When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with two tablets of the testimony in his hand, and he came down from the mountain, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. Aaron and the people of Israel saw Moses, and behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. So Moses is literally glowing when he comes off the mountain, like literally glowing, like the glory of God is on him and, and it is emanating from his body. He is being illuminated with the glory of God because we cannot come in contact with God and we cannot come in contact with the glory of God and not be changed. So this is a dangerous prayer. This prayer of dear God, please show me your glory that is a dangerous prayer because it is impossible for us as human beings to come in contact with the God of the universe and not be changed. It's impossible, it's impossible for us to see uh, the true character and the true nature and who God truly is and, and stay the same. It is impossible for us to come to God and stay in our comfort zone. You see, a lot of the times what we do as human beings is we like to take God and shove him in a little box. 
Sometimes as human beings, we like to take God uh, from this huge, awesome, powerful, creating God of the universe, and we, we dwindle him down to nothing uh, but just this small God that can fit in our pockets or that can fit in the palm of our hands. So many of us have just a, a wrong uh, and false view of God. We have this different view uh, of who He truly is. And all of the time, each and every time, we all have our different view of who God is and from His character and everything, but every single one of our views are way too small. We don't let God be big enough. We don't grant Him all the power uh, that He actually has. We don't grant Him all of the greatness that He actually has. We don't uh, gr uh, grant Him with all of the awesomeness uh, that He actually has. We take God and we put Him into this small little box. You know, we read the Bible and we're like, you know, yeah, God is great and God did all these miracles, but He can't do that for me. Yeah, God loved me so much that He sent His Son to die for me, but, but he, He's not going to work in this part of my life. Yeah, God is awesome and He can do everything, uh, but I'm going to try to do this on my own and not let Him help me with this. We all have these false uh, views of God. Sometimes we view God as this cuddly, uh, stuffed animal uh, who we love and we like to cuddle with, um, but when we want to do our own thing, we push Him away. You know, we, 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 we come to Him for the goodness and the grace and the love, uh, but we kind of push away the fact that He is holy and just. We punch Him and kick Him and get Him away so we can do uh, what we want to do. We have this false view of God, uh, and we need to ask God to show Himself to us. You know, a lot of the times uh, we, we treat God like a spouse that we're just going to go and cheat on, if we're being honest. You know, we tell them we love them, uh, we say we're going to be faithful, but then we turn around and go and do our own things and go our own way and do everything that, that, that He doesn't want us to do. You know, we treat Him like uh, He's just this spouse uh, that we love instead of this holy God uh, who is jealous and just and is angry when we go against Him. We all have this, this false view of God, this man-made uh, view of God, this, this sin-nature-driven view of God. So we have to ask God to show Himself to us. We have to pray this dangerous prayer of God, please show me your glory. We have to be open to see God in all things. We have to intentionally go about our days to where we can see the glory of God and everything that He does through us. We need to be looking for God in the situations of our lives. We need to be looking for God in every uh, little bit. We need to be looking for God in the people that we know, in the people that we love, and the people that we serve. We should be looking for the glory of God all around us. When we pray this prayer of God, please show me your, your glory, He will make Himself known and we will quake in His presence. We will quake in the presence of God. When we look for the glory of God, when we try to see God and who He is, the very first place uh, we have to look at is through creation. Uh, in the last, uh, you know, three of the four uh, sermons, the last four uh, have been outside, and I love being outside uh, recording a sermon. And yeah, it makes it a little more difficult. There's birds, and uh, there's wind, and there's, you know, there's lighting issues, and, and, and audio issues, and, and the fact that I'm sitting in the mud and my stool is sinking a little bit, and I look like I'm angry because the sun is so bright. Uh, but I love being outside because I love being in God's creation. Uh, with this being Mother's Day, I'll tell a story on my mom. Uh, before my mom passed away, she worked for UofL for uh, 25 years, and, and she worked for the uh, biology department. Uh, so she was literally working, uh, she was an accountant there, uh, but she worked with all of the professors, uh, you know, who, who taught through, you know, you know evolution and, and anti-creation and all of that stuff. Uh, but my mom, God bless her, she, every, every year, she would get a God's creation calendar, and it would be hanging in her office. And her office was like right in the middle of the biology department, right in the middle of the anti-creation, anti-Christian uh, area of that, and she would have her God's creation calendar uh, hang on the wall all the time, and it was just, it was just such a cool uh, thing. Now, the first place that we look uh, when we look uh, at the glory of God is we look at creation. When we look around us, when we see the mountains and the valleys, uh, you know, in the sky and the air and the, and the grass and the animals, we see how awesome God truly is. We see how creative uh, and how wonderful uh, everything was made. 
You know, when we look at the complexity uh, of the universe and the planets and everything, how it all works together, and we look at the complexity of our, our planet, of, of planet Earth and how everything works and how everything's perfect, uh, when we look all the way down to the complexity of our DNA and how it is God writing in the code of who we are, uh, there's no way that we can look around uh, and, and think that this possibly came to be uh, just by itself or by chance or by accident. There's no way. There's obviously a creator. So when we come outside and we look at the beautiful creation that is around us, we see uh, the glory of God. Uh, in the first chapter of Romans, uh, Paul is talking about how the Gentiles didn't know the law, that they weren't given the law uh, like the Israelites were, uh, but they were still, um, they still understood who God was. This is from Romans 1, 19 and 20. It says, For what can be known about God was plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For His invisible attributes, namely His eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. So Paul says that look even the Gentiles who had never heard of God knew who God was. They didn't know who they knew but they knew him. He's like you know they looked around and they saw the creation. They saw the internal power. They saw the divine nature uh, and through this entire creation that God made they knew there was someone there. You know, when you look back through history uh, and you see all of the, the religions, all the pagan and false religions that have been brought up, it's people searching for God, uh, but they haven't found Him yet, so they make their own gods. And Paul is like, look, this is the God, the creator of the universe. And because of creation, uh, we can see God. So the first place that we seek the glory of God is through creation. Look how David put it in Psalm 19. He said, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaim his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words whose voice is heard. Their voice goes out throughout all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In him is set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving its chamber. Like a strong man runs its course with joy. It's rising from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them. There is nothing hidden from its heat. So David says, the heavens declare the glory of God. You know, so when we look at this dangerous prayer of Moses, of God, please show me your glory, the first place we look after saying that prayer is in creation. We stop and listen to the birds chirping and, and the creek running by. And we look at the hills and the valleys and the beautiful sky and we know that God made all of those so that we as human beings can stop and see how great and awesome He truly is. God was the creator of everything. But that's not it. There's, there's so much more than that. You see, God isn't just a creator who created all of this wonderful stuff and put us in it and then just sat back in His barca lounger, put His feet up and chilled. No, you see, God is a God who is sovereign, who is always there for us. Someone who is all-powerful, all all-knowing, and all-loving, and loves His people so dearly. We see God's glory uh, through that as well. In 2 Samuel 22, David and the Israelites uh, were in a big battle with the Philistines. Uh, and God gave them victory over the Philistines. And after that, David writes this beautiful song uh, that he sings. It's called the Song of Deliverance. Um, and he sings this and it is recorded for us in 2 Samuel 22. This is what it says. It says, Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundations of the heavens trembled and quaked because he was angry. Smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire, fire from his mouth. Glowing coals flamed forth from him. He bowed the heavens and came down. Thick darkness was under his feet. He rode on a cherub and flew. He was seen on the wings of the wind. He made darkness around him his canopy. Thick clouds of gathering water. Out of the brightness before him, coals of fire flamed forth. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice and sent out arrows and scattered them, lightning and routed them. And the channels of the sea were seen, and the foundations of the world were laid bare at the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from on high, he took me, he drew me out of many waters, he rescued me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, from those who were too mighty for me. You see, you see the glory of God in this passage. 
not only do you see his wonderful power, how he can just come down from heaven um, and he's controlling the earthquakes. He's, he is powerful enough to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants and to shake the earth. Not only does he have that power, he is sovereign over everything. He is in control of nature. He is in control uh, of the, the lightning bolts. He's in, troll, in control of the waters, control of the seas, control of the earth. He is in control of everything. But most importantly, we see um, that he loves David and he loves his people and that he's going to do whatever he can uh, to come down and save his people. He is the beginning and end, the creator of all things. God is powerful and in control and he loves his people. So when we stop and pray this prayer of God, please show me your glory, this is what we start to see. We see a God who is all powerful, a God who is all knowing, a God who is all loving, a God who is constantly in control of all things. You know, this whole coronavirus thing has been crazy. Just, it's been crazy. It has caught so many people off guard. I know personally it caught me off guard. I never dreamed in a million years that we would, do being, we would be doing Facebook uh, premiere videos instead of having actual church. I never would have dreamed that ever. God knew it was going to happen. God knew it was going to happen, and He has used it for His glory, and He has used it for His good. You know, when you look at the amount of people who have watched just our videos, just the views that we've had um, on our, on our uh, service videos and our Bible study videos, so many people are hearing the gospel through this. And that's just our church. That's just our little church. You know, when you look at all the churches in our area and all the churches uh, throughout the United States and then around the world uh, that have come together, the gospel is being proclaimed to more people now than it ever has, all because of this virus, all because of this virus that completely took us um, uh, by storm, that completely um, took all control away from us. But God was still in control. God still knew, God knew it was going to happen and is still working through it. We pray that prayer, God, please show me your glory. We see it right there. We see his glory uh, right there. Another place that we can see God's glory, uh, probably the um, other than creation, the easiest way to see God's glory is through scripture. You know, we can open up our Bible and see the story of God's glory, of his character and who he really is. We learn that God is infinite, that God is never changing, that God has no needs. He has unlimited power, unlimited love. He knows all. He sees all. He hears all. He is wise and perfect, has unchanging wisdom, infinitely faithful to us. He provides for us. He heals us. He is good and kind. He is just. He is merciful. He is gracious. He's holy and perfect. He's glorious and great. He's the beginning and the end, the creator of all. He is our heavenly Father. I mean, if you just Google uh, the words characteristics of God or names of God, uh, you could spend hours and hours reading all of the nature and the characteristics of God from Scripture. When we pray this dangerous prayer of God, please show me your glory. Please show me who you are. Uh, he can answer you. Just open your Bible. Uh, and look at these psalms uh, that, that, that we're going to read. These are just a tiny, tiny portion of God and His glory. This is from Psalm 96. It says, Splendor and majesty are before Him. Strength and beauty are in His sanctuary. Psalm 29 says, The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Psalm 145 says, On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wor wondrous works I will meditate. Psalm 93 says, The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Psalm 21 says, His glory is, is great through your salvation. Splendor and majesty you bestow upon him. You see, the Bible shows us the glory of God. The Bible shows us the glory of God. And when we can come to a place where we earnestly and intentionally seek the glory of God, we will see it. We will see it and we will see it in Scripture. Because if we can come to a point where we say, God, please show me your glory. Show me who you are. Show me your character. Show me what you have done for me and you open up your Bible, the Holy Spirit will show you exactly what you need to see so that you can come uh, and, and meet God more fully and have a fuller uh, and more complete picture of who God truly is. 
And when we do that, and when we come to a place where we can see the glory of God, we will change. It is impossible for us to fully see the glory of God and to fully come in contact with His character and learn who He is and not be changed. It would be impossible for us to see the glory of God and to see who He is and remain complacent and remain apathetic and not treat our faith as the most important things in our lives. When we see the glory of God, we take everything so much more seriously when it comes to our faith. When we see the glory of God, we do everything that we will, we will do everything that we can uh, to treat Him with reverence and awe with everything that we do. We cannot see the glory of God and, dis and disrespect Him enough by putting Him in a little box. When we see the glory of God and we truly see how great and awesome He is, we cannot reduce Him into just this little God who did stuff back in the Bible uh, but can't do, stir, do stuff for us now. When we truly see the glory of God, we can't take Him and bring Him back down and put Him into our own frame of mind. Because when we see the glory of God, we will change. Our image of who God is will change. And as a result, the way we come to God will change. I mean, just think about Moses. Moses saw the glory of God, and as a result, he was changed physically. Now, he was also changed mentally and emotionally and, and from a leadership standpoint, but he physically changed. He came down from that mountain, and he was radiating the light of God. And it's the same with us. It is the same with us. We cannot see the glory of God and not be changed. We cannot see the glory of God and not want to do everything that we can to give Him all of the glory and all of the honor and to make Him famous here on this earth. When we see the glory of God, we want to do everything that we can so that we uh, can be a living sacrifice for Him that is holy and pleasing to Him. Look what the writer of Hebrews says in the 12th chapter. This is the, the last chapter, uh, the last passage of the book of Hebrews. He says, See that you do not refuse him who is speaking. For if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on the earth, how much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven? At that time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken. That is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus, let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. Ooh, that's a great passage right there. In this passage, we see that the one that is speaking is God. It's the same one that was speaking uh, with Moses. Same one that was speaking with Moses on that mountaintop uh, there on Mount Sinai. This is the same voice uh, that said, yeah, I will show you my glory, but only my back, because that's all that you can handle. And his is a voice that can shake the foundations of the earth and the heavens in their place. The writer of Hebrews says, he says, don't reject the one who is speaking so that you don't miss your salvation. And he says, uh, these things, um, he says, he is shaking the earth so that these things that we have made, that we've built up in our sin can be knocked away so that the things that can't be shaken away will remain. He says, we're thankful that we have received from God that we have received from God a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. So we see that we serve a God that is powerful enough with just His voice that not only can He create the universe and everything in it down to the smallest molecule, and that with His voice, He can shake the foundations of the earth and the heavens and everything around it just with His voice. We serve a God that is powerful. We serve a God who is loving. We serve a God who is awesome. 
And He loves us so much that He sent Jesus to this earth so that we could take part in the kingdom of heaven, which is a kingdom that cannot and will not ever be shaken. And what is our response to that? What is our response to a God who is so great and so powerful and so awesome? Our response is with reverence and awe. Our response is with acceptable worship through reverence and awe. Because there is no way that we can come and see the glory of God and not come and see uh, how awesome He is and how great He is and how powerful He is and how loving He is and not come to Him and just fall on our faces in reverence and awe. Living a life that is acceptable to Him. Living a life um, that brings glory and honor to Him. Living a life uh, where He becomes more famous than we are. So when we stop and we pray that prayer, God, please show me your glory. Show me who you are. Show me your character. Show me your attributes. Show me everything that you have done. There is no way that we can come to a point and see all of those things and not respond with reverence and awe. Because we serve a powerful and awesome God. We serve an amazing, awesome, great God. The adjectives that we have in the English language and any other language on the face of the earth are inadequate to describe how great God is. And the only way we can know how great He truly is is if He will reveal Himself to us and we come to the point where we can say, God, please show me Your glory and we mean that prayer and we intentionally look for Him in everything that we do. And when we pray that prayer, uh, we can see that. So I ask you to pray that prayer uh, this morning and every morning. God, please show me your glory because I know that if you could come to a point where you could see the glory of God in all things, you will be changed. And you will do everything in your power to live a life worthy of Him. To come to a point where everything that you do in your life is worship through reverence uh, and awe. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for everything that you have given to us. God, we are so thankful for creation. We're so thankful for this beautiful planet that you have given us. This beautiful planet that we can look at and we can see the, the birds of the air and, and the animals of the ground and the fish that are in the seas and the rivers. We're thankful that we have mountains and valleys and just all of this beautiful, uh, all of this beautiful creation that you put around us. We're thankful that you made us the way that you made us, just beautifully and wonderfully complex. And God, we're thankful that you are powerful. We're thankful that you are all-knowing. We're thankful that you are always in control. And we're thankful that you love us and you have a plan for us and a will for us. We're thankful that you gave us scriptures so that we can open up the, your word and see who you are. God, forgive us for the times where we haven't looked for you. Forgive us for the times where we have known who you are, but we've kind of pushed you away. Forgive us for the times where we have put you into a little box of our human understanding. Please forgive us of that and open our eyes to who you truly are. Because we know that if we can come to a place and we can see your glory, we will be changed and we will do everything that we can. We will do everything that we can to give you glory and honor and make you famous here on this earth. God, we love you and we are yours and we serve you with everything that we have. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. If you're watching this video uh, and you're visiting with us, uh, we are so happy that you're here. Uh, if, if you're not a part of the BCC family, uh, you are so very welcome to be watching this video. Uh, and then once we get back up and rolling, you'll be more than welcome to join us there as well. We would love to have you become a part of our family. Uh, if you're watching this uh, video and you have never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, you have never given your life to Him, I lovingly urge you to do that. Um, I would love to walk you through that. I would love to talk to you about what that means. Um, Jesus came to this earth to die on a cross also that you could be redeemed back to God so that you could spend eternity with Him. It is the greatest thing that anyone has ever done for you and I would love to talk to you about that if you've never made that decision. Uh, maybe you did make that decision earlier in life and you've fallen away and, and you've, you've went your own way, uh, you've, you've pushed God away and now you're ready to come back. I would love to walk you through that as well. God is a loving God. God is a forgiving God. He is a merciful God, and He would love nothing more than to bring you back. 
So I would love to talk to you about that uh, if you need to talk about that. Uh, so that's all we've got for this service here today. Um, hopefully we'll be back together again soon. Uh, be watching for announcements for when we'll, we'll be back together soon. Hopefully it's not too long. Uh, but until then, st until then, stay safe and healthy. Um, keep your hands good and clean. All you mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. We love you all. Thank you so much for what you do. Uh, we love you. God bless.